more 2017 IPSC World Shoot coverage coming your way today. Julie Golub here. I'm a pro shooter for Smith & Wesson, a federal premium, Trijicons, Farley & Caldwell, Tipton and Wheeler, sharing my love for the shooting sports. Thanks so much for tuning in. I know a lot of you have been excited for these next two videos. If you're new and want to do a little catch up first, I'll leave the playlist in the cards and linked below. If you've been following along, you'll notice for these last two days of the match, I don't have head cam footage. I do love the Tachyon gun cams for capturing first person footage, but there's always that element for me of, did I remember to turn on? <laughs> that adds a little stress to the mix. I wanted to be focused for these last two days, so I left the camera at home. There's that. So let's get into it. It's the second to the last day of competition, three days down, castle hopping with some R&R &R the day before, and now just 12 stages to go. I am stoked to shoot on this day. <laughs> we head to Area Red with stages inspired by the Americas. Feeling like I may have a little bit of a hometown advantage on this one. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. We head to stage six, our first stage, and we'll track back to complete the day shooting stages one through five. And it is another early start with that funky lighting. <laughs> the sun is kind of in your eyes, kind of not. It's just weird, but not blinding at least. So there's that. But it is something to easily take for granted. Stage six is pretty straightforward for a medium course of fire with seven paper targets and three mini poppers. No movers, no shakers, nothing too complicated for the shooting part anyway. And you can start anywhere in the shooting area. This stage was on my mind quite a bit going into today. I'd watched several shooters shoot through it, but it was really hard to see where the targets were without walking the stage. And of course you can't do that until the walkthrough. <laughs> With the freedom to start anywhere, that meant you could begin at the back and work your way up to the steps, or you could opt to shoot from the high position and finish up at the back of the stage with the low ports. I chose the latter. And you'll see as I shoot this, those low ports, they were no joke. Generally, I feel pretty nimble, but for this stage, I like the idea of getting low and staying low at the end. The plan, draw and engage the paper and steel that could be seen from the top of the steps. Make a reload while retreating to the back right opening for T6 and MP3. Then a shift to the left, settling down into a low kneeling position, I'd engage T1 and T2. And then a hard shift to the right from my knees gave me view of T7 on the right. It felt like a bit of a scramble to find everything in the walkthrough, but thankfully, after several days of shooting, by now our squad had some, some really good flow. <laughs> and I have to say, this is one of my favorite squads to shoot on in all of my world shoots. Yeah, there, there's always a little sizing up on day one, but there was no aggression, no pushing, no teammates allowing their top shooters extra time by jumping in their place in the walkthrough. Trust me, I have seen it all. <laughs> so instead, there was just truly a spirit of sportsmanship and that sort of thing, it really allows everyone to perform their best. So yes, our squad rocked. Didn't mean to ramble there, so back to the shooting. <laughs> In my plan, I was thinking all about my feet. Being an early morning start, there was a little dew on those steps and the rest of the stage was graveled, so kind of interesting footing. Making sure my feet went where I wanted them to go and not slip <laughs> was important. In fact, I was focused so much on where I needed to be in the stage that my shooting was more than subpar at the beginning of this stage. You'll see me miss poppers and take makeup shots I didn't have rounds for in my mags, resulting in, spoiler alert, the dreaded flat-footed reload. Ugh, I hate those. <laughs> After that first position, my mind clicked in place and I had to trust my walkthrough plan for the position work and switched to focusing on the sights. Here's the run. Thank you. 
This stage ended up being eternally slow at 27.72 seconds. Bright side, only one Charlie, but I ended up fifth lady on this one. Yelena Sevkovic took the lady stage win and she crushed my time with a 19 second run. Not only would I love to have the stage back, I'd love to shoot it over and see how all the different ways would pan out. You know that feeling you get when you think everyone is looking at you to see if it's the beginning of the downfall? Yeah, <laughs> I kind of got that impression, I'm not gonna lie. Unplanned standing reloads are one of those telling ugly moments in practical shooting that not only hurt your standings, they're hard on the ego too. I was annoyed, yes, but extremely motivated. I didn't let the poor shooting at the beginning of the stage carry through and make things worse. It was done and time to move on. There's Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> Stage one was the first short course of the day, an eight rounder with three paper and two poppers. Each popper activated a bobbing target and the center target had a no shoot. The gun was loaded on the table and you had to engage all the targets strong hand only. In classic with 11 rounds, that meant you couldn't go crazy or else risk misses on the steel or shoot too many shots on the bobbers. With the way these bobbers moved, I didn't see any need to rush and try to get two shots on each exposure. And so I opted to shoot the steel first, get the bobbers moving, and then transition back and forth until I was happy on those bobbers. I'd finish up on T2 with a no shoot, and I felt this way was not only safe, it would give me a smooth and accurate run. Are you ready? I took a makeup on the steel and on the right bobber with an overall time of 9.51 seconds and just one Charlie hit, but it did feel very smooth. And it was even good for a 21st place overall finish. This stage was really great for me and I took the lady stage win too. Moving on to stage two, it was our long course for the day. 10 paper and seven poppers, so quite a bit of steel on this one. The start position was at the center of the range with hands on the wheel, and after that, you just shoot them as you see them. My plan was a classic shoot and reload while moving. I wanted to go to the left first, stopping at the first position to shoot T1 through three before reloading to a sweet spot at the end of the left side of the U-shaped area. From this position, I could see a bunch of targets. I opted to shoot what I could see from the right and then finish up shooting the viewable targets on the left side from left to right. After that, it was a retreat back to the center and to the right to shoot T8, 9, and 10. The final position, another sweet spot to finish up on T4. The four remaining steel targets I could see and T7. Here's my run. Many times for stages like this, you can engage them as a mirror image, but this one was a little different. The targets were set up just a little differently and you had options as far as what you could see from where. I know a lot of higher capacity divisions opted to shoot steel on the move, but with classic and the round counts for the positions in the back, I just felt much better shooting than moving. Stats for this stage were 24 A's and five C's with a time of 35.01. And I managed to take another first among the women in classic on this one. So yes, another win. <laughs> Next up, stage three and another short course. This was another eight rounder with two swinging paper, two plates and two mini poppers. The firearm is in the holster, but it is an unloaded start. After the turn, draw and reload, you pass through the swinging doors to shoot the targets. I wanted to take care of the steel first in order to activate the swingers and finish up on those movers. Sweeping left to right would create the smoothest transitions with that swinging no shoot target combination there, but I wanted to get them through that first deep swing where they're the fastest before engaging them. 
This stage was deceptively simple. Turn, load, and shoot, right? Very simple. That mini popper in the back was a good ways out there. And even though the plates were close, you couldn't take them for granted. So my plan, start with the mini poppers on the left, then the plates on the right before ending up on the swingers, transitioning between each swinger, taking one shot per pass. And here's my run. Bye. This was another excellent run for me. It was a sub 13 second run with just one C hit. And it's an example of how knowing your own ability level can produce great results. I had a top 20 finish overall on the stage, my best in the match. I could have pushed to shoot two shots on each pass of the swingers, but the extra time on the transitions were worth the good hits and staying away from that no shoot. On to stage four, a medium course with 10 paper and four poppers. You started in the center of the area with your hands on the post and foot on the bar. At the start signal, draw and shoot the targets as you see them. Steal targets near the swingers on each side of the stage, activated the swingers. Another mirror stage set up on paper, but this one was a fun one to figure out with classic round counts of 10 rounds per mag. Because of the capacity, I needed to set up in different positions, which meant I could get activators moving and shoot them toward the end where they'd still be moving, but not anywhere near as fast. After the buzzer, I'd take the activator P1 right off the bat and shoot what I could see, T5, P2, P3, and T6, leaving the swinger to shoot later. A reload with a slight retreat to the left, I'd engage T1 through three and then make a hard transition to the right where I could see P4. Another load to the right to catch T10, T8, and the swinging target T7. One more reload, I'd advance forward to shoot the last stationary target on the right and the final swinger on the left. My time was right where I wanted it to be on this stage with a sub 30 second run, but I got a little sloppy on the hits with six Charlies and one Delta. I ended up third among the women on this one, but with the results so tight, I only lost five points on the stage. I officially hate D's. <laughs> the last stage of the day was our final short course with 11 rounds, five paper, one popper. Two of the paper were movers, a swinger, and a bobber. You started seated at the table with hands on knees with the pistol loaded and on the table in front of you. At the signal, engage the targets, the steel activates both movers. It could be possible to go absolute hero mode on this one without a reloading classic, but I really didn't see any reason to do so with a little movement for this stage. At the buzzer, my plan was grab my gun while standing and shoot P1 to get everything going as well as T4 and 5 that you could see from the window. Then I'd reload while shifting to the back left corner of the shooting area to engage T1 through 3. This being the last stage of the day, and with the previous stage, the one with the D hit, I needed to get back to focusing on my sights again. The final stages of the day are always the most mentally challenging for me. Whether I know the end is in sight or if I'm tired, hungry, whatever, I know I have to focus extra hard on the shooting aspect in order to be successful. I went into the load and make ready for this stage with intention. All A's on this one, with a time of 13.18 seconds, a first place among the women in the stage, and a 38th place finish overall. Yes! <laughs> this is exactly where I wanted to end up. The day started out a little rough, 
but I buckled down and as a result had a fantastic performance with two of my highest overall placements. I was exactly where I wanted to be mentally and in the standings going into our final day. It was time to get some food, <laughs> put my feet up and get ready for one last afternoon shoot time. All right, have any favorite stages from this video? I'd love to hear which ones you liked best. Let me know in the comment section below. If this is the first time you're watching match coverage footage, let me know if you have any questions. I say this in every video, but I truly, truly appreciate y'all so much. Thanks so much for allowing me to share this with all of you. And until the next one, be safe, have fun, and live your life fully loaded.